Ramana Maharshi's words are deep and direct. My comments are intended to bring his deep words into your experience. Use YouTube's closed captions to read along. This week is talk 121. Let me go to it. Uh, this is talks between two Muslims and uh, Ramana Maharshi. The questioner asks, has God a form? And Maharshi responds, who says so? The questioner responds, well, if God has no form, is it proper to worship idols? Maharshi says, leave God alone because he is unknown. What about you? Have you a form? And the questioner says, yes, I am this and so and so. Maharshi replies, so then you are a man with limbs about three and a half cubits high with a beard, etc. Is it so? And the questioner says, certainly. Excuse me, I guess I need to be retrained. Maharshi says, then do you find yourself so in deep sleep? And the questioner says, after waking, I perceived that I was asleep. Therefore, by inference, I remain thus in deep sleep also. Maharshi says, if you are the body, why do they bury the corpse after death? The body must refuse to be buried. And the questioner says, no, I am the settled jiva within the gross body. And Maharshi says, so you see that you are really formless, but you are at present identifying yourself with the body. So long as you are formful, why shouldn't you worship the formless God as being formful? The questioner was baffled and perplexed. There's a verse familiar to many of us. Lead me from the unreal to the real. It is from the Brihadaranka Upanishad, one of the early Upanishads, and an important scripture for Advaita Vedanta. In this dialogue, we can see Ramana as he tries to lead these questioners from the unreal to the real. <clears throat> In the dialogue between Ramana Maharshi and the two Muslims, the discussion revolves around the nature of God, worship, and identification with the body. The conversation begins with the question of whether God has a form. Let me break down the dialogue and explain it within the context of Ramana's teachings and Advaita Vedanta. The questioner asks, has God a form? And Maharshi replies, who says so? In this exchange, the questioner asks whether God has a form. Ramana responds by questioning 
who made the assertion that God has a form? This is a significant point in Advaita Vedanta, which emphasizes the formless nature of the ultimate reality or God. If you believe you have a form, then so does your idea of God. If you have no form, how can God have a form? How you see the world and God depends on how you see yourself. Ramana starts by asking the questioners to investigate themselves to see if they have form. Then the questioner says, well, if God has no form, is it proper to worship idols? And Maharshi says, leave God alone because he is unknown. What about you? Have you a form? The questioner has raised the concern of whether it's appropriate to worship idols if God is formless. Ramana advises the questioners to focus on their own self rather than worrying about the nature of God. He asks the questioners if they themselves having a, have a form, continuing to direct them to self-investigation. One of the powers of Ramana's teachings is the understanding that since God is all, then it is easier to find God within yourself rather than examining the variety of the universe. Look within yourself for what is always there. That's how you find God. Ramana also says something important, that God is unknowable. Why is this? God is unknown by the mind. The mind can only know objects, and God is not an object. The God you can think of is at the same level as the ego and the world. The vast absolute Brahman is unknown by the mind. But as you dive deeper than the mind, this God is known by your own being. As your own being, are you separate from God? Are you different from God? You know God by being. These videos help bring Ramana Maharshi's teachings into your direct experience. Subscribe now to help you deepen your understanding and practice to know the self. Just click the subscribe button.